Okay, the last part we talked about, we talked about homozygous. So I believe that is clear to everybody. When you see it in jam, just just clear it. Just you know, clear it. You shouldn't give you problem with it. Heterozygous is clear, so heterozygous will not mean that instead of you having this double capital A or double small A, it's going to be what? One capital, one small A. Look at it here. Uh, look at it. Uh, capital A, small A, capital A, small A, capital T, small T, capital H, small H. That is heterozygous because the zygotes are not the same. Then the next one. I said it could either be homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. What does it mean? Remember that capital A is dominant, right? So when you have true capital A, it is homozygous dominant. Remember that small, please don't be confused. When I say capital A, it can be any other alphabet. So if I use A, if I use this small now, let's say I'm using small B, small letter now, it means recessive, right? So if you have double small letter, it is what? Homozygous also, but it is recessive. Are you there? Homozygous recessive, homozygous dominant can exist. Okay. So let's move on. I hope we'll get to a place where I also get to explain what we have in this DNA structure to you guys. Okay. Now, the next one is what we call deployed number of chromosomes. Please share with me. This is another aspect of biology that JAM uses to take student mark. I'm very, very serious. And it's, what is because it is confusing. Now, when you hear diploid, please don't think about something so serious. Diploid means it is complete. It means it is old. And I can call it Y. How many chromosomes are there in a dog? 78. 78. So the diploid number of chromosomes in a dog is what? Is 78. How many chromosomes are there in human being? 46. So the diploid number of chromosomes in human beings is 46. But the next one I will talk about is haploid. Haploid number of chromosomes, it is half the total number of chromosomes that an organism has. It is always found in sex cell. Now, please, let's look at it. Haploid. Haploid from the word half. Split into two. Are you getting me now? So the haploid the, the number of chromosomes in a dog will be 36, am I correct? No, 38. 39, right. Because it is 78 divided by 2 to give you 39, right? So the upper number of chromosomes in human being will be 23. And why? You should ask me, why do we need haploid? Haploid plus haploid plus haploid is what should give you Deployed. And that is the reason why when you add a sex cell, please stay with me, plus sex cell. I'm going to break it down. When you add gametes, plus gametes, I'm still going. When you add the egg cell, plus the sperm cell, they should give you what? Full organism. Are you getting me now? In the case of human being, sperm cell from egg cell gives a baby. Are you getting it now? And that will not give you diploid. Because a baby must contain 46. But the sperm cell and the egg cell must not be more than 23. If it is more than 23, that baby will be abnormal. One of the things that we shall appreciate God for is the position that, that goes into this process. But whenever mistakes happen, it is always very, very consequential. I'm not cheap. So I believe haploid and diploid is clear. Haploid cells are the gamut. They are the set cells. Why the diploid is an organism that is complete and it's not undergoing what reproduction. Okay, now let's look at this one. The next one is monohybrid. Many little pieces. Mono means one. Right? Hybrid means what? A new baby that is not the parent, that is not the it's not the father, it's not the mother. Maybe you don't know. The all of us are hybrid. Because you are not 100% your dad. You are not 100% your mom. So you do not even look like any of them completely. Like you are not 100% any of them. You are different on your own. That's what makes you an hybrid. So when you say mono hybrid now, is a form of inheritance where only one trait is passed. Please, what do I mean by that? Come in. Only one trait 
is passed. Now, take for instance, if uh, H is, let's say this H now, I'm using this H for your thumb extension. Some people have straight thumb, right? Some people have straight thumb. We call it each eye car and uh, like there are two. Some people cannot bend this. They, if, if they do their thumb like this, it can go very, very straight. And some people can still bend it backwards. Okay, now let's say you have this and you have this. Remember that this H now is talking about only one thing, and that is the ability to bend your thumb. So, how many traits do we have here? Only one. And that's what makes what? Monoid bridge. That's what makes it monoid So, when you have A, A, it is still monoid bridge. When you have B, B, it's monoid because it is believed that A and A code for one thing. They code for one trait. They code for one trait. B and B code for one trait. Of course, the characters can be different. Please do so in that character. When you have a trait now, it, a trait can be split into two characters. If I'm, if I'm uh, in negative height, it can either be either for me to be tall or for me to be short. Tall or short are the characters. The height is the trait. Okay. So this is mono hybrid, but in the case of the hybrid now, when you have this and you have this, can you see that they are different? The letters are not even the same thing. That is what makes it the hybrid because we have two traits here. For your level, this is the highest that jump can go, that white can go. And white jump and white will not even give you to do an analysis of this the hybrid because it is complex. I can simply do mono hybrid traits and use normal uh, uh, cross like this, right, to get my mono hybrid traits, but I cannot do that with the hybrid. I can't try this with the hybrid. We need to use what we call Pune Square. And I'm going to teach you something that you will not even need to bother yourself. Are you getting my point? Don't worry, we'll get there. Okay, the hybrid. It's a form of inheritance where two traits are passed onto the hospital, for example, this. Then we have what we call genotype. All of us, I believe you know your genotype, right? You know your genotype. Some people are A, some people are SS, some people are AS, some people are uh, SC or CC, some people are like that. Those are very uh, unpopular genotypes. Right. The genotype is the blood type that you have. Is the type of blood that you have, but there is what there is a sibling or a cousin to genotype. It is called phenotype. The phenotype is the physical observation of your genotype. Now let's come back to this place. I was talking about height that time. If the capital H will make me tall, then the small H will make me short. So if I have this as my genotype, it means I'm going to be tall. Why? Because this capital is dominant and this guy is recessive. So this guy will be there, but he's going to be quiet. So me being tall is my phenotype. Me having this is my genotype. Is that taking this? Me being tall is my phenotype, what people can see. But being short, I mean, but having this is my genotype because the genotype is a type of blood. Why this is my 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 phys the physical representation of what my genotype represents. Okay, now what do what best? I said this is the physical observation of genotype. I gave an example. I think we need to do something here. Mr. John is homozygous dominant. Please stay with me. At this stage that you are, I think you should be able to interpret some questions because Jamb would give you interpretation questions. Okay. Mr. John is almost like also better for fair skin. What do we use for fair skin? Any alphabets we do. So let's use fair skin. Let's use capital F for fair. Right? Okay. Mr. John is homozygous dominant. For Mr. John to be homozygous dominant, it means Mr. John is having this. Because capital F is dominant, the two of them being together makes it over. Am I still there? Okay. Uh, is homozygous dominant for first to make compression? While his wife is homozygous recessive for sale. The wife is, you know, if this capital is for fair, then the small would what? Either to be dark in complexion, right? 
Or she would have might have this like, kind of complexion. You don't, I don't really know. It's in the two. Right? It's in the two. Okay, so then the wife is homozygous recessive. So Mrs. John will be like this. I'm sure you will play. Now the question is this. What are the possible genotypes and phenotypes of their offspring? So let's do it. No, now let's look at the children of this union. What are the offspring that will come from this union? So let's look at it. This guy and this guy will be capital F and small f. Right? This guy and this guy again will be capital F and small f. When you are doing cross here, it's just like you're doing mathematics. If you have 2s plus 4 into a bracket and 2y minus 3 into a bracket, how do you solve this? It's going to be 2x, this 2x here against what you have here. 3y, I mean 2y minus 3, then plus 4 into the same thing. So let's do the same thing. So it's going to be this capital F against the two of them, right? And this capital F against these two small f. So I've done the first one. I got capital small, capital small, capital small, capital small. Can we move on? So if I am to continue like that, it will still give me capital F small f the capital F small f, right? So now, the question says that we should give the possible genotypes and phenotypes of their offspring. Now, what you have done here is that you have gotten their genotypes, right? So let's look at it. What will now be the phenotypes? All the offspring will be what? All the offspring from the union of Mr. and Mrs. John will be what? It will be fair. Even though they are all heterozygous, none of them look like the parents. They are all heterozygous. That means they have a combination because the two parents are not as the heterozygous. Mr. John is homozygous dominant, Mrs. John is homozygous recessive. But the parents will now be heterozygous dominant. Why? Because they are having different ideas. This guy, this guy, this guy. Am I with you? Can I move on? Hello, can I move on, please? Okay, so I think we are done. We're done with that. Now, the next one is what are the genotypic and phenotypic ratios of the course? That is what the jam will ask you to give them the ratio. Now, if I'm looking for the genotypic ratio now, genotypic ratio, all offspring would what? That is one, because all the offspring would be what? All of them are the same thing, right? But if, let's say, I now change the question, I give you this. And this, like capital F, small f, capital, capital. So I'm going to have capital and capital, that is this guy and this guy, right? Then this guy and this guy, capital and capital too. Then this guy and this guy, capital and small. This guy and this guy, excuse me, capital and small. So for me to do the genotypic ratio now, this guy are the same thing. This guy are the same thing. Why? Because these two are both are uh, homozygous dominant, but these two are not. So the ratio will be ratio 2 to 2, which is ratio 1 to 1. Is that clear now? Hello, is it clear? Can we move on? Okay, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so let's move to the next question. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Mr. and Mrs. Smith are both at a for widow speech. For them to be the results for window speech. Now let's do it like this. Let's say W is for window speech, right? So if this is for window speech, right? And the two parents are both at the result, that means they will both be like this. I don't know if you guys are still with me. So the two of them will be like this. Okay. They are both at the results for window speech. They are going to produce a child that does not have window speech. This is the father and this is the mother, right? They will now produce a child, at least one child, that does not. Because this man, even though it is in terms of God, is definitely having the widow speak. This woman too is having it. How come a woman and a man that don't have it now give birth to a child that has widow speak? Okay, so Mr. John or Mr. Smith is now angry. He's accusing his wife of infidelity. Is it justified or not? Okay, guys, we'll come back after this short break to look at this question. Thank you, and please stay tuned.